Hi, it's Scott Allen, with some thoughts on what the Wallabies have got to do with their attack as we go into Bledisloe 2 this weekend in Wellington. The Wallabies have made it clear they want to play with an expansive and up-tempo game plan. That doesn't just mean flinging the ball wide, and there are a number of elements that need to work together if it's going to be effective. For example, if you're going to play off set piece, you need clean ball delivered. Your 10 needs to move forward to hold the defence and not just shovel the ball sideways like we saw last weekend. There needs to be some variation in angles from the midfield runners so that not all of your players are running on one angle towards the sideline. If your 10 keeps the attack straight and then you've got changes in angles from different runners, you preserve space out wide and you start to stress the defence. Obviously I believe you've got to get numbers into your attacking rucks early and those players have got to be effective to protect your ball. If you do that, you produce quick clean ball for the next phase. But to take advantage of quick ball, you need players to realign quickly so there are multiple options on the next phase. Of course, all that work setting up opportunities means little if you then don't execute well, if you have poor passes, dropped balls, or players not making the right decisions. It's pretty basic stuff, but we didn't see a lot of it from the Wallabies on the weekend. Let's have a look at some examples where we did. The Wallabies lineout was excellent on the weekend, providing good clean ball, and here's another example. We can also see Tamua moving forward to engage the defence and hold them, which he did a lot better in the second half. He's got O'Connor in behind him, Leela Lafano and Ashley Cooper in the midfield, in a quite tightly bunched group, and that means the All Blacks defence has got to focus on them and can't drift off early to take space away from the outside men. As we roll forward, you'll see that Ashley Cooper is used as a decoy. He runs outside in, or an unders line, coming back at the All Blacks defence. With the majority of the All Blacks defence having to focus on Ashley Cooper and the other midfield players, that leaves space for Mog and Falau out wide. So it's been well set up. Unfortunately, this play breaks down because of a poor pass from Leo Lafano. But it shows you that if you get these basic elements working together, you can create opportunities. Now here's one of those wide rucks that I talked about the other day. And in this case, although it's Slipper that makes the clean out of Richie McCaw, it's actually the work of James O'Connor who gets in early to the ruck and protects the ball that denies McCaw the real opportunity to either pilfer that ball or to slow it down completely. As he should, Hooper was running ahead of the ball, anticipating that it'd be carried to the gain line, and that's where the breakdown would occur. If that had happened, he would have been in good position to be first into that attacking ruck. On the next phase, Hallwell carries on the short side. It's a good carry, but it's also good work from Simmons, Falau, and Leo Lafano to get in early and protect the ball. On the next phase, we've got another back rower in McMenamin and Slipper who work together, and although it's not a totally effective clean-out, they do enough to minimise the disruption caused by Hoare. And that quick clean ball has provided an opportunity out wide. You can see the numbers the Wallabies have. Now to take advantage of the opportunity, Tamura has flattened up, and you'll see that when he passes the ball, he's drawn defenders to him, which again retains some space for the men outside. Now when O'Connor receives this ball, the Wallabies have effectively got a four on two, to work in a 15 metre channel, which is not a lot of space to work in. Now O'Connor's drifting slightly across field and that's further reduced the space. I'd like to see Ashley Cooper here change direction and come back inside O'Connor. That's going to attract the attention of Latour and it's going to give Moore and Moen who are out wide a little more space to operate in and give O'Connor some options. But as with most of the Wallabies attack on the night, everybody keeps angling towards the sideline taking away space. Having said that, when Ashley Cooper catches the ball, an immediate pass to Moen may well keep the opportunity alive, and that would have been a good option. However, he takes the decision to step back inside. Now here's another of those wide rucks, and it's Hooper that's first in. He gets rid of Ben Smith, and although he's not in great position, he's able to resist Latour, and that gives quick ball for Genia. Now Genia tries the short side option, which didn't work, but the Wallabies again protect their ball well, and although it's slowed down a little bit, it's still pretty clean ball. Now as we look at the wider angle, the All Blacks defence is fairly well spread. So it's an opportunity to try and go through the line rather than around them. And the important factor here is Rob Simmons inside Leo Lafano, which puts the defence in two minds and opens up the opportunity for that inside ball, which is exactly the play that's used. Now Simmons makes a half line break, but he's got pretty limited support from the forwards for this ruck. So it's good work from Tamua, and then Slipper arrives in time to provide quick clean ball for Moore to move on. Here's another wide ruck, and we've just seen Moen and Hooper protecting the ball on the left side of the field. Now McMenamin's in the ruck on the right side, and Moen and Hooper have got across to that side of the field as well. So now we've got the back row working in a combination, and that's very effective. Here, with Hooper carrying the ball, it's Moen that's first into the attacking ruck. And that's giving us good, quick, clean ball, and allowing each runner to get over the gain line. First it's Alexander, and then it's Horwell. 
Now as Horwell's tackled, it's Reed that's first on the ball. And that's because the support players are just a little behind the ball carrier, opening up that opportunity. Now because Reed was on the ball so early, he's in really good position. And it takes three Wallaby forwards to eventually get Reed off his feet. But he's already had the effect of slowing the Wallabies' ball down. McCaw and Whitelock then believe they see an opportunity and go in, for which they're penalised. As you can see, the margins as to who's first into the ruck and therefore has the best position to either protect your ball or to slow the opposition ball down is pretty fine. I think this segment of play shows us what the Wallabies are trying to do with their attacking plan. If it's going to work in Bledisloe 2, here are the things I'd focus on. 1. Getting those players into the attacking rucks early to protect the ball. 2. Better running lines from the support players to put some doubt into the All Blacks defence. And 3. Better execution.